Okay guys, so what we're going to be doing now is looking at um, line tracing. So we're going to replace, if I just play this, um, you know on the template you get this yellow ball which doesn't really act like a normal bullet might do. So we're going to change this into something a bit more professional I suppose if you like. Um, something that might act like a normal uh, gun, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our content drawer and we need to find in first person blueprints, the blueprint for the actual gun itself, which is this one. Um, and what you'll see is all of the setup for how um, this rifle has been set up to work for this bouncing yellow ball method. But I wouldn't worry too much about all of this stuff. What I would look for, or what you need to look for, is this here, which is the on fire projectile. It's a custom event, all right? So it's the event that essentially triggers the gun to fire. That's the main thing we need to know. So what I'm going to do is alt click that. So detaches it from, you see this one spawning the projectile. So it's not going to do that anymore. And we're going to bring it over here and we're going to do something totally different instead. So we're going to make it create a line trace by channel. Okay, and a line trace is going to be, it's going to have a start and an end point and it's going to trace a line in between. So you get that pinpoint accuracy. Um, so the start point, if we come from here, we need to get the world location. Um, just get one of these get world location ones, um, whatever it's attached to at the moment, delete it. So we just got get world location. And what we're going to get the location of is the, the camera, essentially, because we want it to fire in the, the center. So over here, we've got a reference to the, the character, which is where the camera is stored. So I can drag this in and get a reference to it. And then from that, I can say get um, first person camera. That's what it should be called. There it is. So we've got a reference to that first person camera, which is going to be the location of the start of the line trace. Hopefully that makes sense. The end point is going to be different, obviously, based on where it, where it ends up. Um, so we need to do this a little bit differently. We're going to come and start over here from the first person camera and we're going to type in get forward vector because obviously it's uh, it's, uh, it's moving forward um, from that camera position. And we are going to times or multiply that. So I'm going to type in multiply. Move this up a little. And we're going to times it by a specified range. So for that range, we need to create a variable. So I'm going to create one and call it get, oh, that's range, isn't it? Or get gun range. I don't, need to, I don't need to type in get. Just gun range will be fine. Um, and we're going to make that a float. So let's just compile that. And then we can, let's move this up, uh, adjust the default value of that variable. So. The range that we type in here is essentially going to be how far the range is on this weapon. So I'm going to type in something really, really high, 50,000. So there's not really an end. Um, it can go as far as it really needs to go. Um, but, you know, you might have a different gun which acts differently, which, which might have a shorter range. So that's going to be dependent on what you want. Right. So I can drag that in now. Get a reference to that gun range. And that's going to go into there. So that's going to times... And then we need to add the, the the vector and the location together. So come from here, hit plus. <clears throat> that wants to go in there, and that one there, and then this one can go to the end point. Yeah. So the end point is going to be based on wherever it hits um, going forwards within this range. So let's hit compile. Uh, let's move down the options on my line trace by channel. So uh, trace channel um, is going to be from the camera. So let's click camera. Actors to ignore. So what do we want it not to hit, essentially? So we want to, uh, well, we don't want it to hit ourselves. So let's drag in a reference to our character again. And then link that up to actors to ignore. There we go. Okay, uh, what else have we got? Um, ignore self, yeah, well, we obviously, when, when we say self, obviously we are the gun, 
at the moment. So we don't want it to hit the gun. We want it to go through it through that. So we want ignore self to be turned on. Uh, don't worry about the, the color of the, the trace. You can adjust those if you really wish. And the draw time is how long the trace appears on the screen. So you'll see that just in a second. So I'm going to compile that and minimize this, push play. And you can see now, oh, you can't see it now. Uh, what have I done? What have I missed? I don't know. Let's try again. Huh. Okay, <laughs> so this draw debug type. So, um, yeah, at the moment it's got none so it's not actually going to show the line trace for debugging so i'm going to change that to for duration sorry about that let's push get rid of that and there we go so now when i fire you can see the end point that it's hitting for that duration of five seconds and then it'll go away obviously for debugging okay so that is our line trace but the problem is you know if i had an, an object here that i wanted to uh, you know, hit or to destroy, then how do I go about doing that? So what I'm going to do first is just create a new blueprint. Um, so something we can destroy, right? So let's call it enemy. And I'm just going to make it a static mesh. Uh, what do we want to shoot? Um, a cylinder. That'll do. So this is our enemy, the cylinder. Uh, I'm going to go to event graph. So say this is your um, your enemy, right? So what we need to do is we need to have an event, which is going to be called event any damage. So any type of damage is going to take damage from this. So what it's going to do then is it's going to um, remove some health. So we need a variable for our enemy health. This kind of stuff is, uh, I could go through in more detail in other videos about creating health for enemies, but um, we'll just do it quite quickly now. So it will set the health to uh, minus, let's type in minus these days, so minus, uh, it's going to be to enemy health, so it's going to, Take away whatever the damage is from the, the event from whatever the enemy health is at that time. So I'll just hit compile quickly to give myself some health. Let's give myself 50 health, or the enemy 50 health, should we say. Right, uh, then we need a branch for a condition. So we need if it's equal to or less than. So that's going to go for you. If it's equal to or less than zero, then if that's true, it's going to destroy the actor. Okay. All right, so if any damage is applied, wherever that damage is, it's going to set the health to minus whatever that damage is to the current enemy health value. The condition is when that enemy health gets to uh, zero or less than zero, then it will destroy the actor. Okay, and it has 50 health because that's what we applied in here in our value. Okay, so problem is, you know, we could put this enemy into the world. There it is. Um, we could get our gun and start shooting at it, but it's not going to destroy it because we haven't told the gun to be able to take any damage yet. So I'm going to go back to the, um, the rifle again. And what we're going to do, so we need to, uh, from on hit, we need break hit result. Okay, put that down so we can see everything. And we want to from here apply damage. Okay, so what is the amount of damage we are going to apply? So we've got the range of the gun. Now we need a new variable for the gun damage. Okay, that's going to be a float again. 
compile that and then the gun damage so the enemy had 50 health right so let's say the gun does 10 uh, damage per hit right compile that uh, some hit actor that's going to go to damage actor and then yes the base damage is going to be the gun damage so yeah we put a variable here so it's going to apply damage based on what the gun damage actually is there okay so let's hit compile so what it's going to do after it does the line trace it's going to apply damage based on what the gun damage is um, and that's going to make that work so let's go play let's grab our gun and then shoot this guy a bunch of times and then boom try again one two three four let's die after four hits uh, that's a little bit weird what we can do is go to enemy here so what we can do in set, um, we can do a print string just for debugging purposes, and in the string is going to be whatever enemy health is. So let's try that. So you see up in the top left? Just trying to work this out because it goes to 40, 30, 20, 10, and then dies. So well, what we can do is we can go to our rifle, we can go to gun damage, change it to 9 instead of 10. If we want it to take 5 hits, of course. So now I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then it's dead. That's fine. So you can just adjust the gun damage dependent on how much you want it to, to work, essentially. It's completely down to you. So that works great. You know, um, the line trace works. We can um, take damage. We can destroy things now. Uh, but we've lost the animation, we noticed that. So when we fire, the gun is just very still and a bit boring. So um, we're gonna go back to the rifle again. And we're gonna sort of scoot down here um, to this original code for the gun. And see, you've got a montage play, and it's playing this animation, okay? That's what we want. So I'm gonna Alt-click to detach it from all that rubbish. Um, steal that line of code and bring it up here next to what I have already. Losing things, come on. There we go. And then from apply damage, we can plug that into montage play. Okay. So there you go. Our animation is back. Okay. Great. So if I add a few more of these enemies in just for a final demonstration to make sure this works so now I push play pick up the rifle and I can shoot these kill that one kill that one kill that one and obviously um, you could change these cylinders obviously to character models with animations in and AI and all the rest of it um, but this is just for setting up that firing so that you're not just firing that yellow ball around anymore it's acting like an actual gun would act okay so I hope that's helpful um, see you guys soon